What's going on there, folks? Good afternoon. Good morning to some out there. It's the Earthmaster here on this beautiful Saturday. It is uh, October 22nd, 2022, about 11.43 a.m. California time here. Latest quake on the globe shows some activity uh, around the this area of the world let's go ahead and check out this movement here that's kind of kicking up in a swarm actually it looks like we got a, a little swarm of activity let's see what's going on here let's bring open the display capture and uh, we'll get things going by the way the um, data systems there for the seismographs are currently offline they've been offline all night uh, with only a little bit of operation from a couple of the seismographs that I normally run so I double checked everything all the uh, public servers are currently down um, so we'll keep checking on that <clears throat> seeing if we can get those back online because it's pretty important there to pay pay attention to the uh, live seismographs because there's a lot of earthquake activity sometimes that takes place that's not issued out on the uh, USGS notification system all right looking at the map here that latest earthquake a 4.9 out here in the indian ocean kind of right right around the mid indian ridge just south of there a little bit on a, a divergent boundary fault system we did see some activity up here as well a little bit further closer uh, to the owen fracture zone last night so a little bit of movement out here on this area of the world uh, further east here around china seen some earthquake activity as well with a 5.3 uh, that one was coming in uh, yesterday time frame far as newer movement goes aside from those two earthquakes over there around the uh, at least one of them in the uh, Indian Ocean uh, the most recent movement here looks to be a couple earthquakes around the Papua New Guinea area with a 4.8 and a 4.5 in this region all other areas appear to be older movement uh, up here to the north into our watch zone this has been a, a watch zone for a, a big quake for quite a while uh, this is one of the areas a major subduction zone major accumulated uh, stress rate up here for some time we haven't really seen a lot of uh, earthquake activity as far as large-scale movement goes and looks like overnight we had some further activity around the Kuril Kamchaka Trench 5.0 also a 4.9 a little bit further upstream um, a little bit before that so some activity kind of ramping up there in that region got to watch out pretty closely eventually it's gonna give us a big one uh, what do we got here 4.4 in Alaska that one was from uh, looks like yesterday not a whole lot of renewed movement here on the map let me double check make sure we got the no we got the most recent quake here recent activity low activity out here along the Pacific plate uh, just prior to the subduction zone here that one was coming in yesterday so what do we got for newer activity it looks like just a couple small microquakes here over the last few hours across Alaska things very minimal at best across the Pacific Ocean <clears throat> I mean the uh, Pacific plate uh, along these boundaries here Hawaii Got one earthquake up here around the Kilauea volcano. It looks like it's just outside the crater area, three kilometers deep. Mauna Loa looks like it's kind of tapered down a little bit far as its swarming goes. And most of the activity looks like um, earlier, uh, earlier this morning, a couple of small microquakes out around the Pahala area. No major adjustments though showing up there currently across the area. Up into Washington, I'm kind of surprised they're reporting some uh, some earthquakes. Although most of these are from yesterday here, looks like they kind of added them on late because I remember doing the update last night and there was nothing. Remember, we looked up at the Pacific Northwest here and there wasn't even one speck of an earthquake. Uh, it looks like they put these earthquakes later after the fact. Uh, far as their reporting goes, it's a little on the sloppy side. Um, Eureka these earthquakes here are from yesterday we did have a little swarm of activity here kind of deep into the uh, subduction zone of the Cascadia underneath this area a couple ones and twos uh, movement new movement uh, looks like Nevada has been um, 
seen a little bit of activity uh, throughout the night kind of stretching across the Great, Great Basin area notice the uh, couple twos out there did see a 3.4 near Austin Nevada that uh, let's see when that came in here looks like uh, earlier yeah just earlier a little bit ago now some of these earthquakes here let me see what we got so most of this let me see here most of this activity up here up north okay I see what the USGS has done here kind of issued a uh, Looks like some of these are coming in late. Okay, I was thinking about something else there for a second. Let me get back on topic, on track here. Uh, yeah, some movement across the Great Basin here throughout the uh, morning. Also into the um, Bay Area. Looks like low activity stretching across the region there. Danville, 1.1. Geyser activity is continuing, although not quite as active over the last couple days. One earthquake came in last night. Seen this come into the uh, seismographs here. At about uh, that was 2210 or 2252. So my time, UTC time, is um, off here on the side. 1.9, well south of Mount Shasta. Nothing going on going on across the Mount Lassen area. Most of the movement here confined to the areas around the plate boundary that's going to be the San Andreas Fault the creeping segment there showing some activity Long Valley Super Volcano and the Ridgecrest area all looks pretty quiet uh, just a couple spotty earthquakes and uh, same for about the Southern California area only a little bit of minor earthquake activity throughout the morning time span one earthquake uh, gotta watch this though see if we start getting a swarm down here uh, right now just a little 1.6 right off the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault um, at about 2.1 kilometers deep that one occurring a couple hours ago now right now there's no swarming but uh, we do start to see some swarming in or around this segment here it makes me nervous and that's when I will issue a uh, earthquake watch but for now just a little small microquake within this area Remember, this thing is wound up pretty much as tight as it can go. Um, and then some. It's been uh, th over 300 and something years since a, uh, a full rupture here of the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. And uh, this segment down here has not seen anything in quite some time. So this is where the 8.1 can occur, will occur, just a matter of time when that happens. Okay, Yellowstone National Park is absent of earthquakes, so let's go ahead and check our raw data from the uh, Yellowstone Overview folks here. And it kind of looks like, you know, let's go to the Holmes Hill area. There's some uh, activity yesterday, overnight time span, some microquakes. Now, on the weekends, the USGS does not issue anything uh, as, far as far as earthquake activity goes here at Yellowstone. Uh, unless it's above 2.5 and then a computer system will actually put that out as a preliminary earthquake uh, notification if anything does take place there above 2.5 but looking at the map uh, the chart here the graph not likely these are all very small in fact probably below 1.0 all right uh let's see what else Ooh, let's see what else we got stand by for a second here uh, my power box came here today, by the way, for the uh, other other computer. I'm hoping to have that. Uh, oh, hopefully it works. Hopefully it's the issue, just the power source. I'm going to see if I can't get the uh, other live stream ran up today, put up for uh, volcanic activity. So I'll be working on that a little bit here. Also got quite a bit of school work, so I'm kind of swamped, but I got to do what I got to do. Uh, let's see. These are from yesterday's time frame. Nothing new to report across Texas. Looks like one earthquake here yesterday as well, up against the uh, the Great Smoky Mountains, Blue Ridge Mountains area. Beautiful area. Just, I've never been there. I kind of want to go out there and see if, see uh, 
what I can soak in. That was a 2.0 at 13 kilometers deep. Not, not a big earthquake at all. Pretty quiet across the eastern portion of the country. Um, here into the Puerto Rico area. Now we're getting a little bit of further movement here up towards the Puerto Rico Trench. A couple threes kicking off, including a 4.5 out around the, uh, uh, what is that, Blowing, Port, Blowing Point Village? Never heard of it. So a little bit of further movement and a little adjustment up there around the Puerto Rico Trench. Definitely keep an eye on that. Considering all the activity, uh, it's been pretty active across the uh, Central America region and up around the Middle America Trench. Uh, the general plate movement here will put this area under quite a bit of strain considering all the activity we've seen uh, last week here in the area. So watch this area around the Puerto Rico Trench. 4.5, the latest one, looks like earlier this morning at about 5 something my time. Five. 4.5 some aftershock activity continuing and up north this one from yesterday uh, just off the coast of Nicaragua 53 kilometers deep into the Middle America Trench South America pretty quiet not a whole lot going on down there uh, let's see here again these are from uh, some of those are from yesterday some overnight this one here looks like that one ki kicked off uh, early this morning time frame of 5.0 so um, I thought this one here was from yesterday but it's not so there is still some newer activity kicking up here along the Curl Kamchaka Trench gotta watch that uh, let's see what else we got um, doo -doo -doo, Hawaii okay let's go ahead and shoot on to space weather uh, we did reach G1 class storming conditions here twice uh, overnight and uh, more recently this morning. So that coronal hole, this one right here, which is number 34, it is now currently uh, kind of turning away from us. Looks like there's a couple other coronal holes that we're going to be uh, watching pretty closely as well, some developing ones. And these right here will be rotating in the view uh, and providing us with a direct shot of some high, we uh, high wind solar wind stream here this one here surprisingly got us uh, we did get a glancing blow with the BZ component um, pointing towards the south here let me go back to the raw data it kind of opened up and allowed a uh, lot of wind stream here to flow in solar wind that is and uh, create those elevated solar weather conditions that we've seen overnight and this morning and uh, looks like we've seen some uh, <clears throat> good aurora potential or we did have some auroras at the higher latitudes uh, right now it's not favorable here for this area of the world sunlit side uh, but possibly tonight that could change and uh, we'll see these conditions or at least the forecasted conditions prevail uh, tonight and tomorrow as well before things calm down a little bit so looks like we are just right on that edge of the um, of the solar wind stream that uh, uh, was coming from this coronal hole but there is a couple other sunspot or a uh, couple other coronal holes we'll watch in the coming days as these rotate in the view solar weather in the suns sunspot activity department is very minimal uh, 3127 3126 and a couple of these other ones are not looking likely for anything major uh, only a 55 percent chance of a sea flare 5% at best for the M flare. And there's not a whole lot of further sunspots developing across the eastern portion of the sun. Um, so it's going to be uh, going to be pretty minimal uh, for sunspots. But coronal holes, uh, that does also send charged particles this way. And it uh, will create uh, some elevated conditions there for the folks at the higher latitudes not expecting anything major no g2 class storm uh, i was actually kind of surprised we reached into this category but uh, things you know kind of play out and uh, looks like uh, it was favorable for uh, conditions here on earth to receive those uh, those charged particles uh, let's see what these guys saying storm in pro uh, progress the bz component 
could just mention here of the interplanetary man magnetic field carried past Earth via the solar wind is currently tipped south. <clears throat> Grab some of my morning coffee. Uh, let's see, a minor G1 geomagnetic storm watch is currently in progress. Okay, we already went past that, and it still looks like conditions may be... Uh, well, they're kind of tapering off a little bit right now, but... Either way, somewhat active. Uh, let's see, I think that's about it, folks. I am, again, I am working on get getting the uh, other computer up and running so I can run a secondary live stream with volcanic activity and some other data. Um, I will be doing that and also quite a bit of schoolwork. But also uh, the live stream seismograph stations are currently down. Uh, I'm sure you guys notice no data coming in whatsoever. In fact, when I refresh the app, that accesses the publicly available data from the USGS and other monitoring systems, uh, there's nothing. Uh, it shows no active seismograph stations anywhere across the globe. So I'm not for sure what's going on with the public server uh, because as a government agency there, we have access to view the data publicly here. Anyone can. And uh, right now it's not working. So I don't know if they're going to get it working this weekend or not. I'm hoping they will, but I will keep checking on it. So for now, I just replaced the live seismographs with the uh, solar X-ray flux chart. Kind of shows, uh, you know, elevated, or it will show elevated conditions pending we have any flares popping off on the sun. But right now, it's pretty quiet. And then, of course, we got the aurora forecast up top. And um, we'll keep it like that for now until I can um, get the other seismograph stations back up and running pretty important pretty important to watch the live seismos we can always go back on the recorded data uh, and look at it that way but man I'm, uh, I'm pretty used to watching the live data that's kinda how I uh, see what's going on and what's not being reported out here alright guys have a good day stay safe oh man Conditions out here, weather conditions in California, beautiful. We're only supposed to hit 71 today. Uh, a lot cooler, got a north wind coming down, bringing some colder air here in the Northern California, and I am loving it. So I'm going to try and squeeze in a barbecue as well today. Busy schedule, but that's all right. The weather's nice, weather's perfect, and uh, we'll be off here off and on, folks. Uh, we'll be checking in here on the live stream. Stay safe and uh, be prepared out there. Have a good day.